everybody. You know what time it is. It's finals time. This is the final of the Dathomir Galactic Championship Qualifier here, London, England, digitally, of course. Super excited to be here, and yes, the fear has come to the X-Wing community. Can you feel it? The bugs, where's your raid spray? Where are your flip flops? Where is your fly swatter? We're opening the bets in three, two, one. We got Nantex on Nantex here in the final. You know what? I will tell you that this, this game right here, it's one for the record books. Now let's remember, the list has really just been apparent the last little bit in the meta. And we're going to get to the breakdown in the differences between these two in a second. By the way, we're going to add some colors on both sides. But I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for joining us for the final of Dathomir. For all of these events, we have been teaming up with content creators from around the X-Wing community. And for this one, we're teaming up with the Firestorm Squadron Firecast. How are you doing, gentlemen? Yeah, we're doing good. All I'm right. Bold, I'm a bold Go. prediction before we even start. I think Nantex <laughs> are going to win this one. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Excellent. Just put it out there. Just, just put it out there. what's going to be. <laughs> okay. So we have people. Uh, the bets are coming in right now, which is great. Um, first, let's have the – I want you guys to say your names, and then I want you to to give us a little analysis on the differences between the two lists, which one you think has the advantage, and then I have some tidbits of information to add at the end of that. I'm also going to get the colors set for both sides. Go ahead. Take it away. Okay. So I'm Nick. Uh, you guys have heard me for last, in the last game as well. So we've got – Andrew's running his with, he's got the four predators, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Yep. Um, and the crackers. Um, and has elected to spend all of his points to have more. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of this. And watching how he, he flew the game last round, uh, I think having that extra bit of bit of predator, those extra mods just might, might just help him out. So I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. I think that's going to be uh, the one from me. Cool. And of course, I'm Phil. You've heard my voice um, before over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, and on the other side of the board, you have Tharn Lanigan, who went the opposite way and actually dropped a Predator uh, from his list uh, to try and get the bid in the mirror match, which is what we've ended up here uh, for the final. So everything cracks up, but only two Predators on the board. Um, the difference, of course, as I said, between the two of them, one ha one's going to fall 200, the other one um, wants the, the bid in the mirror match. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right call. Personally, I actually would go with Andrew here and put the points into having the more um, predators and go, right, I've got more mods than you, I've got more reliability. Yes, you're moving first, but I know where you want to be because I can do the same things. All right, so here is a little little tidbit of information. This matchup already happened in Swiss. Both these players played against each other, and Fawn was the winner of that matchup. Fawn was the winner of that matchup. Uh, so the person who chose to take the, uh, the bid... And then additionally, I'm going to go into our uh, into our rounds here, and I'm going to go find that matchup. Give me one second. I'm going to find the score. I didn't. You got. You guys got through that. Let's see. That was not not round five. Not round four. Oh man. How well, how early did this happen? It happened in round four, and Fond won two hundred to to uh, eighty two. Two hundred to eighty two. So a pretty large lead there. So uh, while I do believe you're correct in saying that having the extra mods on there can make a big difference, Fawn's movement or something about that game, I'm, I'm curious to talk to the players afterwards and uh, and talk about what's going to be the what's the difference between these two. Because of course, something we've talked about a lot um, in the X-wing community is the Curse of the Swiss. If you've never heard of Curse of the Swiss, essentially, when you see an opponent in Swiss and you beat them. Um, assuming that you played your best game, um, if you have, for instance, the same setup 
every time or the same strategy against an opponent that you've uh, already played and you win, that opponent now has a look into your playbook. They've seen, they've been in that situation already. They can either learn from the mistakes that they've made before, they might play it a little bit different than they did before, or additionally, um, they might have a different opening or a different something different about how they approach the opponent that beat them last time that gives them a bit of an edge. The winner from the Swiss game from before, oftentimes, you know, you, you go in saying, all right, I, I did X, Y, and Z to get me in the lead last time. It won me the game. Should I change my strategy just for the sake of changing because, um, you know, they've seen it already? Or was that strategy sound enough to get me another win? Yeah, we know Revenge of the Swiss, uh, unfortunately, is alive and well because in the XVT, we end up playing um, Marcel and a few others from Gold Squadron in Swiss. And uh, Nick and I won, Dom lost. Uh, and then in the top four cup, it was the other way around. Marcel beat me and uh, Nick lost and Dom won. So we know that Revenge of the Swiss can be a, a thing indeed. And as you're saying, it's do you change the strategy because you, you think that um, your opponent will know it better? Or do you think that, no, this works, we'll stick with it? And both players are thinking it, so they're both trying to outthink uh, each other before you've even set a single dial. I mean, Fan Lang Lang also is, is no stranger to the UK. He's uh, He's been over called a, a few times for, for system opens, for nationals. Uh, yeah, brands. former UK champion. Um, exactly. He's, he's a phenomenal player. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever list he has in his hands. Um, so, I mean, that's certainly a part of it. When you've got two very similar lists, player skill is can definitely be the thing that tips the balance. So we're just going to see. Go ahead, Dean. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. And some additional information with that is the fact that Fawn did win not only the game against Andrew, but he won against two other Nantex um, mirror matches with their similar archetypes. Um, so, you know, he has also the advantage, the experience of playing against uh, another Nantech squad. He's got he's gotten to practice it three times. But again, there is that situation where it's like, hey, well, did you, did you play the same person? And that that is where some of the uh, some of the strategy can be. I'm curious to see a couple of things. I want to know how aggressive they're going to play. I'm curious to see uh, once we do have an engagement, what are what's going to be the target priority? Uh, you know. Are we going to get a lot of bullseyes from one and side arcs from the other? What's going to be the uh, the weapon of choice in the situations? Additionally, as you guys know, we have Nantex all over the place. We're going to be referring to uh, Andrew's list as the Zebra Squadron or the uh, the Tiger Squadron, which everyone feels good. And, uh, of course, Fawn will just call it Fawn's Yellow Nantex or Pink Nantex. We'll try to keep it clear that way because we can't just say color Nantex. It doesn't make any sense because there's 12 of them on the board so zebra red and zebra blue and so on and so forth and we use Fon's name there for any confusion now before we go too far I want to remind you that this round and all of our rounds this weekend have been brought to you by curled paw creatives use that coupon code dathomir 2020 to get 20 percent off make sure to have that acrylic ready to go for in-person play i know that some of our european friends will probably be able to play x-wing in person before we can here in the u.s so uh just be be ready be ready the local for tournament that. is happening today in basinstoke in fact there yeah, our first one back was today, but of course we've foregone that to uh, to join you here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's been so, oh yeah, completely so much, uh, Thank you so much. It's been such a good, such a great fun day, a fun weekend, I should say. Yeah, as indeed, as indeed. Awesome. So, yeah, the the jockeying for position here. Going to, be, going to be interesting. And, of course, I want to remind everybody who's watching live that we're live here on Gold Squadron Podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, if you want to tune in, we have our podcast recorded live here on Monday. You can be part of the conversation starting at 8.30 p.m. Central. Wednesdays, we have Gold Squadron League Night, which is myself or other Gold Squadron members playing against members of the community. Super fun there. And Saturdays is Gold Squadron Flight Club, where we have community matches matches with list building challenges that take place every Saturday. Uh, of course, we didn't have it last night because we had Dathomir Swiss uh, earlier in the day, but that usually starts around 5 p.m. Central. And if you want to be part of Flight Club, by the way, you can type exclamation point 
Fight Flight Club, excuse me, uh, and uh, fill out the form there. It is absolutely free to join. You just uh, basically sign up for a slot. Let me know when you're available, and I'll call on people uh, every uh, every other week at this point with the Dathomir, uh, with the different qualifiers going on. We will be live with Flight Club next Saturday. First word about Flight Club. Always talk about Flight Club. <laughs> Oh. Okay, apparently Sith Taker Tim said that his list is painted after Tiger Mosquitoes. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so uh, old uh, World War II British um, Viking. Makes sense. I've never seen a, a Tiger Mosquito. I'm going to go Google. We're literally, we're, you know, we got the power here. Tiger, tiger Mosquitoes. And while Dion's doing that, I mean, it, it's obviously both players are quite happy with the spread of the gas clouds here. They've, they've almost got identical placement across the map and just having that ring of gas clouds around the outside of the central central one. Um, obviously happy just to use that for a few bits of position and try and use their skill to, to position themselves in the right way. Um, with the Tiger Mosquito Nantex, there we go, uh, <laughs> kind of setting up in there two blocks. Happy to kind of do that with... I'll try not to avoid a pun with Fan Lang Lang spreading out uh, a bit and kind of just but in one kind of consistent area as opposed to being two separate parts. Yeah, it's interesting, of course. Andrew's um, stuck with the, the triple block um, formation he had in the the last round in the top four. Um, and Fan, uh, I don't think we've had on stream yet. Uh, not from the game. Nope. Much, so. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know. I I personally think that they look like zebras, but uh, that's that's what I'm gonna call them. See, art is in the eye of the beholder, and uh, I behold them as zebras rather than uh, tiger mosquitoes. So, should be fun. Um, insert pun of a bullseye of the tiger as well. There's somebody who said that in, uh, in the chat. Yeah, you know, I I'm not surprised that Andrew's being not as aggressive. I'm, I'm curious, uh, again, this is all, like, I wish I could just talk to the players right now while they're, uh, <laughs> while they're playing, like, hey, Andrew, did you use the same setup, like, last time? Because we saw that in Andrew's previous game, right? He did this two groups of three, one at the top, one at the bottom, and now it looks like he's bringing them back together as opposed to Fawn, who seems to be fanning out from his original box of six. Yeah, so same list, but two different approaches. Um, so I think it's going to be seeing which mentality, which um, approach is going to be better. Um, I do... I do worry that Fawn is spreading his a little too thin at the moment. However, that's nothing against Fan. It's just a observation where we're at because I know what a phenomenal player Fan is. I have played him uh, before. Yep. Fan for the XTC last year, where you and I uh, met Dion, um, which was yes. the first we did Euros. Oh man! And, uh, I, yes, I love I, I love that one. trip. <laughs> oh, it was it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, but more the point, I played Fan that day, and I know I have a lot of respect for him. So I, I know the method will be in his um, in the madness is somewhere. Uh, but for now, I'm just very interested to see how Andrew's going to start to try and pick them off one by one, I think is what he's going to try and aim for. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, what do you think his objective is going around the edge there? I, mean, I think I think exactly what you said. And, and who knows, like, Fawn kind of seems like he might be baiting with the brown one that's on that bottom side. Uh, because the, the pink, blue red even maybe yellow could hard turn very easily if andrew takes his uh zebra green zebra pink and zebra brown and tries to zoom at that uh at that brown fawn uh nantex on the bottom of the screen there uh, it's oh this is definitely a game of cat and mouse definitely a game of cat and mouse and fawn is really really good at it mm -hmm. um he used to play 4k wings so I played at UK Nationals a couple of years ago at the UK Games Expo. Um, he tore apart some jet, if I remember on the stream. Um, but he's just very good at cycling ships in, just cycling them out, getting them where they need to be. It's, it's just, he's such a calculated player um, with a wealth of experience behind him. 
Yeah, for sure. So do we think that uh, Farn is using that brown Nantex down the bottom there as a bit of bait? Sure, that's what Dion said. Mm -hmm. I love it, but he, he's confirming. <laughs> he's... Yeah. he's... It, it's, yeah, it's confirming, but also in a way of... It's it's not just going after as a pure bit of bait, it's whether you... Yes, he can hard everything in, but do we think that um, Brown is going to be completely sacrificial, or do you think he has a plan for Brown? Well, that, that's definitely more the thing. So if if the uh, Tiger Mosquitoes can use that to um, take a ship off the board early, if they can get those shots through, we've got at least one bullseye in there at the minute, but of course Fan hasn't moved yet. Um, and he certainly seems to be lining up for that. that taking a ship off the board as, as quick as possible puts either side at a massive advantage. Those numbers are going to tell, and the quicker that happens, the more advantage they will have. Yeah. Although I'm a little bit concerned now about uh, the zebra mosquitoes being brought in um, with yellow, blue, and red coming down the side there, because um, as Dion was saying, you, he could Thang could bring his to bear either through the gas clouds or target whoever was going after uh, Brown. I think that unless Andrew's careful, he could really leave his flank exposed. All right. So looking at some of the movement. Andrew has completed all of his and now uh, looking less, you know, ships, uh, three sets of three, a little more spread out in a conga line. And Fawn is starting to turn to the left here. Bullseyes seem to be not on at the moment. Of course, that can be fixed real quickly with a little barrel roll action, which I think we're going to get with Fawn's blue. Nantex likely barrel rolling to the right, and there it is. That bullseye is now on to pink. Real quick note to producer Nick Sperry. Uh, double check the crack shots on Andrew's side. I think one of them is crossed out. Two of them are crossed out just from the last game. I know you just reset the, the health. Just watch out for that real quick. Um... I do want to thank everybody for watching today. It is uh, awesome to get the community support for this tournament series. And I remind you that we have the next one, the Concord Dawn event, is in two weeks. It is based on the Australian time zone. And hopefully we can see you there. We'll, of course, be streaming that one. As of right now, is the one with the lowest number of tickets sold. So if you want your best chance of getting a course on invite, uh, Australia is going to be it. Also, I think they have the coolest pin out of all of them. I'm, I'm, I, I think it looks amazing with the cracked planet off. Yeah, it is a very, very lovely thing. Although, to be fair, I have just bought myself a, uh, a Dathomir one. Uh, Forte has a nice little memento of this, because I've really enjoyed it. Nice. All right, so... To get out of range there and get out of that bullseye from pink. All righty, people asking me to rename the the, the following uh, the following planets Geonosis. Uh, we'll probably get a Geonosis at some point. Uh, this thing is from Croatia. We call Geonosis by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I want to remind remind players that uh, at Crate, which is not the next event, but the one after that, the newest ships, the HMP gunship, the LAT gunship, and the Psy shuttle are going to be live and part of our event. So uh, the meta completely changed. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Who knows if FFG will also take the opportunity to uh, tweak the points a little bit. I kind of, I, I'm in the, the boat of I don't think so. I think they'll just end up adding stuff. But uh, if they do, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Obviously, we see it's strong. It needs to be, it needs to be turned down just a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But again, um, I think it's also important to state that in a competitive game, it's like it, if you're going to bring the best list, that's fine. Do it. Just make sure you know how to play it. And I'll tell you that these both these gentlemen, Andrew and Fawn, they know how to play it. Oh, yeah. They do, they do indeed. No, it's, it's interesting to see what the result of the first engagement will be. Uh, I think pink is not long for this world, but also I, th <clears throat> I think uh, brown is also not long for this world. So it depends on depends on dice, depends on positioning afterwards. But I think this will be a, this opening engagement is kind of key. <laughs> 
Toby Z in the in the chat asking uh, Dion, uh, should everyone bring Nantex for Sydney? I mean, if you guys want to torture yourself, you go ahead. I mean, I'm I'm in for fun. Um, that not be a fun stream. Variety is the spice of life. But do what you want. I won't shame you for it. I'm going to put Venny on the board again and see how the Nantex deal with it. Oh, nice. I'll just bring Ketsu and have fun. Now that she's dropped in like eight points between Trajectory Simulator and various bits, the list that I was bringing. So yeah, I'm like, oh, well, we'll try that. <laughs> uh, Nick, on the right side on Fawn, you have uh, the green one labeled as brown green. Uh, brown green is what I look like when I'm sick. And uh <laughs> oh, dear. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a brown dude, so just uh, there you go. Spoilers. All right, so um <laughs> Nantex one left turn and takes a focus. It's really showing here that the bid from Fan is actually going to pay off quite a bit. He's got at least two ships in Bullseye. Assuming that yellow is in range to pink here. Fan's yellow is in range to zebra pink, I should say, sorry. Um, that's going to be... We said earlier on that the amount of dice that they can bring to bear is going to be important. And if you get those ships with early, so not taking those few upgrades might pay off for him. Absolutely. Here we go. Zebra side to get in a shot here range three through the cloud only one hit gonna be safe gets an extra evade out of the cloud if he wants it says nah fam i'm good here goes zebra green next checking the bullseye does have a shot there on fawns brown on the bottom side we'll have a three die shot crack shot and predator are live on this one here we go Having the reroll is nice. Does have the focus as well. Probably will spend it with uh, likely not taking any shots. He's debating. Just double checking. Hit, hit, crit. Yeah, you spend it. Four dice because of range three. Got all the paint there. He has to choose here whether or not he wants to spend the focus. Because if he doesn't spend the focus, uh, we could see Andrew use crack shot to push a damage through. We'll find out now. Waiting for the response. I think yes, focus. And if he doesn't focus, definitely have a crack shot through. Yeah. Crits against. Well, he, I think he's debating it from the fact that he's also got um, zebra pink at uh, range probably two, but also with the bullseye with crack shot. Picks. So I think he's kind of weighing up the options of do I take the one crit now or do I save it for when I've got less dice? I think you stopped the crit. Yep, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of offering what the other side of the, the thought process would be. All right, so he decided not uh, to. No, decided to take the crit. Takes the crit, and what was in the box there? I did miss that. Blinded pilot. Okay. So no focuses oh, wow. uh, being able to be used on offense there or predator. I'm not sure if that one actually has predator. It doesn't. So, uh, But crack shot can still be used by that uh, by Fonz Brown Nantex. Here we go. Next zebra up. Spending the focus. One hit. Going to have to make that decision again. Will he give up half points? First time caller, yes, we will be having smoke barbecue tonight. Yeah, you know, he's, he's... he spent it there. He doesn't want to risk any more going through. Very nice. Okay, being defensive there. I don't want to give points. That says says a lot there about the mental shift. A little bit worried. Another shot. This is also in the bullseye. And we will check. Yes, crack shot, of course. And Predators Live has the focus. You know, oh man, uh, this is a tough you, choice. You spend it. Choose violence. Just spend it. <laughs> I mean, I'm for Predator here, but... Uh. Uh, pink doesn't have Predator. Uh, zebra oh, Pink okay. does not have Predator. It is it is just about the focus. Totally spend you, it. You totally spend it. Choose violence. We go all in here on the Firecast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Dom's not here, so we can say that. It's fine. <laughs> That's right. What was the guy? Just going do it. Spend it. Do it. Come on. And he's spending it. He's choosing the violence, ready to push some extra damage with the crack shot. All right, that's they're taking out the crit token for blinded pilot. Here we go. This roll matters big time. He gets nothing. That is a dead Nantex. Big focus spend. Awesome. Brown taken out. That's huge because he's already spent his offensive mods as well, so he didn't need to. It made no difference. Yep. Get the blind pilot, so. Now remember, they're all they're all initiative four. So the brown um, Fawns, brown Nantex still gets a shot. Indeed, indeed. But the, the, the good thing here for Andrew is the fact that he didn't have to spend that crack shot. That's true. Well, we'll see if the uh, if Zebra Pink gets to live through the four shots coming into it uh, after spending that focus, and that is two hits. Going to end up being three. No reason not to spend that. No, no, you spend it all day long. Mm-hmm. Got two evades. Here comes some crack. There's the flip. Taken two damage. Half points on Zebra Pink. Oh, I see. I need to spread out. Um, do me a favor, uh, Nick. Make the... Uh, oh, what is it? This... Ah, never mind. I'll... Can you make the names one point smaller so they become only one line? The names of the ships. When you have a second here. Here we go. Range three shots. One crit. Keely, no bullseye. Oh, going to be taking it. Oh. Takes it anyway. Zebra Pink In taking another damage. Inconsequential fuel leak. <laughs> yeah. Down, down to the final hole there on Zebra Pink. And here we go. Last shot. I mean, you, you, we're, we're assuming that this is going to end him. I think best case scenario, you force Fawn to uh, to spend a crack shot. Ooh, wait. Mm. No predator on that one. You got to no. dig deep here. Dig deep. Roll those two evades. He got one. He could got force. It. He could force the crack shot, which actually is, is not bad. Um, I think we're, we're trading one ship for one ship, but looking at both sides, looking at both sides, only one crack shot used for Andrew and Fawn had to use several. He has used one, two. Fawn might be able to get ahead here, though, going into Zebra Green. One evade. And there are two damage cards right there. That's Fawn getting the lead now, taking half points on Zebra Green. And critically, that's half of um, Fawn's track shot's gone already. All right, so we're going to clean up a couple things here on the table. Just nudished. Captain, my captain. Uh, my stream captain. So uh, yellow had predator. Uh, let's see, you have two up there with predator. Yep. Hey, go ahead. Nick will get it adjusted. He's uh he's working on working on the fixes.
I think we'll get it me, sorted. The, the tiger moth, tiger moth, tiger mosquito nanzex. We've got a, a good position to follow around here. Whereas green for farm just seems a little bit out of it. It's going to take a bit of time to get back in. Although although red and blue are in a similar position because they can kind of sweep around that gas cloud right beside them. Uh, red and green tigers can sweep around and cover yellow and blue coming in from fan. I think they've got a bit more of a slightly better position hmm. where they are at the moment. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, of course, uh, Fan is up. I said he's spent half his crack shots already, whereas Andrew's just spent the one. Um, I think that Andrew's ships are in a better position, but with Fan being second player, of course, he can use his track means to get him out of um, Bullseye Arc if needed. Well, the, other, the other thing is, the kind of flip side of that, is Fan is in a position to spend those crack shots. Mm. He's got himself there, so... Yeah, no, farm positioned himself um, perfectly to do it. He just needed to probably spend a little more than he wanted to. That's fair. And those resources are definitely going to make a, make a difference in our upcoming engagements. I'm looking at just the, the options that Andrew has to kind of sweep in here. Um, Fawn, of course, being... <sighs> Is he going to allow himself? Let me let me grab the telestrator. So I'm curious to see if Fawn is going to be funneled into this corner or uh, into the bottom of the board there, because of course Andrew has has an answer to that, right? We have all these ships able to pull there and have the bullseye pointed in this direction. While if we just have these bugs moving forward and relying on those side arcs, they're giving up the flank and uh, could possibly end up being the victims of some uh, more bullseye shots. But I, I'm really curious to see what what this turn holds. Um, I'm pretty sure zebra red and this green one probably are not going to have shots. They're just kind of, uh, they're the support ship in the back, ready to enter the fight afterwards and be something for the second line to have to worry about. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Mop up whatever's left, hopefully. <laughs> for both of them, really, but... Yeah, I see red, um, tiger, zebra, whatever you want to call it, um, coming in from the back could be used as a uh, clean up device, certainly at the end of the round, if he's got a nice little bullseye lined up after he's forced farm to spend tokens. Uh, to be fair, both, both players know that what the other's list can do, they are essentially running the same list with just the minor changes, um, so they know what positions they don't want to be in. It's can either one of them force the other to be compromised? Can Andrew um, put his ships in such a position that uh, Fun feels the need to use his tractor to get out of them or having to turn away or getting the blocks off. But in return, does Farn also want to try and make uh, Andrew commit to an area that he doesn't want to go into to try and uh, get those outmaneuvers himself? So it's a very interesting... I think this, this engagement will kind of put pay to a lot of um, thoughts about what's coming up for the rest of the game purely because if Farn loses another ship or if Andrew loses another ship in this upcoming engagement, then it could swing one way or the other. There's a lot of calls in the chat here for some, for some blocks. See if can, some blocks can happen. That's, although the Nantex isn't the best ship to be blocked, because as you say, it still gets that reposition, still gets to shoot. Um, yeah. It does mean that um, the Tiger Mosquitoes will have focus tokens and mods where um, Fan and his Nantex may not. So it's kind of, it's going to be an arms race. It's just a, a damage dealer that way, so you can get there first. Additionally, one of the thoughts that comes to mind is um, while Andrew could end up with mods and, and getting blocks could, of course, take the opportunity to focus away from Fawn. If Fawn can just use his reposition to be out of arcs, the focus starts to matter a little bit less. <laughs> yes. It just depends on, what, on, the, like, on the angles and all that and where those uh, side arcs are pointed. It's funny how often ships can sit between that bullseye arc and that turret when it's pointed sideways. Mm-hmm. That's a really interesting place to be. It's, it is. I did it with a large ship the other day as well, I'm impressed. <laughs> I 
Mm -hmm. I think both players are nearly ready. Mm -hmm. I want to remind everybody. I'm not um, sure where they're going to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a think about how many mu different mutations of movement we could get in uh, in this matchup, right? You have all the, to consider all the tractoring on top of all, <laughs> on top of the maneuvers, and that's for every single ship. Well, here we go. We got the hard turn from Zebra Brown, Zebra Green going in three bank into the fray hoping to get some blocks but also have shots turret arc pointed forward at the moment no tractoring taking the focus we have the three left turn from zebra blue same deal from zebra brown pointing all the arcs in that direction and not taking any tractors except here on zebra yellow which means that Fawn had to reach pretty far to get all shots on Zebra Yellow. Of course, um, his Fawn's blue and red could likely reach it. Barrel rolling to the right there using the tractor effect and has an agility reduced by one. I really like this set of moves from Andrew. He's just created a nice little kill box, a block, and um, he sets up for the next turn as well. Uh, ooh, Fawn calling it so, but it seems we literally have to arc dodge all the way around the back there with uh blue and no strain from the cloud oh. does look like fawn has a bullseye arc onto red but also the arc is forward so we'll have a shot there Couple people were asking about lists. Yes, you can still access the PDF with all the lists from the entire tournament by typing exclamation point lists in the chat Anybody who watches this in the future, you can also access the list by just looking up the Dathomir, um, uh, the event on tabletop.to or looking it up on List Fortress. It'll be up in both of those places after the event. Uh, shout out to all the guys who run those sites because they're, they're amazing and would make this impossible to run. Damn near impossible mm -hmm. to run this without things like tabletop.to. Mm -hmm. Yep. It really would be. Mm hmm Absolutely, yeah. Dennis uh, has um, has been gracious enough to work directly with me to make sure that uh, tabletop.to is nice and snappy. With <laughs> turned up to eleven is what I said yesterday for for our Swiss when we have literally hundreds of players um, on it putting in uh, putting in results and things. And it's, it's been a great stress test. We've we've done uh, we have figured out that it is possible. We just gotta again turn it up to eleven. Uh, All right. Because is... I would love to see that be able to run a system open. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh, that'd be, it would be useful. So Farn here, though, is taking his time with revealing his moves, rethinking really carefully about where he wants to place um, his ships, where he wants to use that tractor, taking advantage, of course, of the extra time the final allows. Um, but I'm wondering what he's thinking about the rest of his moves if he's taking this long with this one ship. Yep, so he's taking the tractor to rotate to the right. I think he is prioritizing, get, making sure to get shots on blue. He probably was doing some some zoom action and realized the bullseye could not quite get zebra blue. So rotating there to make sure he's got a shot. I'm guessing that means that Fawn's yellow will be going in that direction as well. Fawn's yellow, excuse me, Fawn's red moving into range one. Going to be trading some shots maybe with zebra green or could boost forward and barrel rolls to get out of Zebra Brown's bullseye. Very smart move there, hugging the edge of the board. This is the advantage we were talking about moving second with these Nantex. Uh, for Fan being able to uh, adjust his play to where uh, Andrew set his ships and just get the bullseye set up, get the position set up, dodge those arcs, do what he needs to do to not take damage while still being able to punish um, Andrew for where his ships are through, through no fault of zone he's just made decisions and fan has made decisions but is able to react exactly well the it's funny how <laughs> the best nantex counter is a nantex <laughs> really because yeah. think about it the the bull the nantex um relies so much on that bullseye arc right you have predator you have crack shot those are great cards but when you have something as simple as a barrel roll able to move you out of multiple bullseyes from an enemy ship 
It uh, especially it doesn't matter if you bump. You you have so much flexibility there. Really, the, the Nantex is the best Nantex counter. Yeah, no, it really is. It really is. It's a it's a sad state when the the, the counter to the horribleness is also horribleness. But <laughs> yeah, just to, to see how this will go. I mean, that also gives um, give pause to the people who um, not give pause, excuse me, give confidence to the, those who who try to bring like imperial aces. Like the maneuverability on those imperial aces is really great. I think imperial players need to adjust the way they play just a bit, though, to account for that extra maneuverability that the tractor can give the nantexts. Because um, a lot of people are trying to play against the Nantex as if they are front arced ships. You have to fly completely differently because of, of of how they can switch their arc and, and the barrel roll like it's it's a different beast it really is i think actually if i yeah looking at it i i think that um both pink and yellow have managed to get out of uh green's arc entirely they have indeed yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's really nicely done but again as we we're saying that's the advantage of moving second in this matchup <laughs> All no right, rolls to crit. No strain. Taking the focus. Again, does not take away that uh, perform action step. And Zebra Nantex just barely able to clip the uh, Fawn's Pink and has one hit. Probably spends the focus token because of how many shots are going into it. it. Only has two hole. It probably will die. Push some damage while you can. Here's a response from Fawn's pink, and gonna be able to push through too. Very nice. Oh, that's half points. Zebra on the bottom there. Going to be firing with the turret out the front. No bullseye. Continuing into pink, seeing if he can get another ship off the board. Does have several shots in that direction. Could also be also be useful to strip the focus. Hey, hit crit. There we go. Only three dice because of the tractor instead of four. And has a decision to make now. Spend the focus or take a crit. Probably spends the focus. I was say you spend the focus all day on this. You don't want to risk a weapons failure or a blinder pilot at this point in the game. Yep. Spends a focus. A few more shots yeah, coming that in. That is the wise decision. <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next Zebra. Zebra Squadron trying to take out the pink Nantex. Spending the focus. <laughs> Not enough. Taking one more. He's yeah. going to require Andrew to take an additional shot, though, not being able to push through both damage. Again, front arc, two on two, focus oh, on the Zebra Squadron side. And Sorry, that's a single crit. To spend the focus if he had one, um, mm -hmm. because of where he sat. And that's going to be enough, though. That's going to do it. Fawn's pink, is. Nantix. Anything that matters there? Any additional cards? Nope. All right. So, Andrew able to clear ship has one more shot left. You probably go to red or oh yeah, there you go. Fawn's blue is sitting there at range two. Actually, sorry, range one. Range Ooh, one. hit hit crit. Ooh. Doesn't have a focus available to it. Taking all of it. Oh wow. man, that could be huge. If we get a double damage here, this could flip the game. What is it? It is a... Ah, I missed it. Where did it no, go? So it, it is a... A whole... Ah, okay. Irrelevant in this case. That normally makes all uh, upcoming damage crits, but uh, one more damage kills it, so it just really matters for how many cards get dealt. Uh, it could be relevant because they're all the same initiative, so you could have things like Rep of pop up as a what would have been a hit. Mm-hmm, true. It's so, like the rare case where it might actually be relevant. Uh, well, yeah, Andrew's got no more shots going into it. 
Oh no, but he's got one health left, doesn't he? We'll talk about sure. later. Yeah, true, true. Alright, there is the Predator getting the full string after spending the focus from Fawn's Red Nantex on the bottom of the board going into Zebra Brown. Gets one focus, oh, still I has the focus that. there, and going to be taking half points onto Zebra Brown. Fawn might be able to clear two of the Zebra Squadrons. Zebra Brown and Zebra Green here with the two upcoming shots he has. We'll see what shot order he chooses. Fawn going with the side arc there first. One of each. No focus. Fine. We're fine. All right, this is going to be through the cloud. So that means that the blue Nantex on the Zebra Squadron side is going to have that um, blink modification. Plenty of dice on this side to end up avoiding it. Do we get it? You're fine after spending the focus. Pink or yellow, which one? Uh, well, I think you get uh, pink first. Yeah. Well, I say unmodded. What do you got? He's got a crack shot. Yeah, I think he's going to go yellow. F he, I mean, yeah, either one. Yeah, so there, he only had one shot anyway. And that's going to be on the green. I guess he could have gone oh. off the side, but the green one is the one that matters. Really looking to clear two ships off the table here. Only one hit. Ooh, Spends the focus, though. That's going to be four, and is it enough? Two more? Yes, it is. Zebra, green, gone. And now we have... Wait, what? Uh, hold on. Some confusion, possibly. So wait one yeah, minute, please. Trying to work out who's who's still left, what's got what, and what shots he's got. Okay, so that was the yellow. Sorry. Okay, so he just he activated. He just hit the wrong uh, the wrong dial. Yellow actually shot at the the green zebra. Yellow because the the yellow had the focus and spent yeah. it on the attack there. This is pink firing out the right side. Now hit crit into the uh, the zebra here on the side. Uh, trying to catch which one that was. Uh, zebra blue, I think. Yes, zebra, yeah, zebra blue, blue is yeah. now half points with a hole breach. So Farns red is on one with uh, hole breach. Farns blue has got the hole breach. Uh, no, Farns blue has got the hole breach. So we've got hole breach on both sides, and not a lot of ships uh, remaining. It's now four on uh, four. But I still think the um, upper hand is with fun here. Yes. We're just going to do a quick double check to make sure that we have all this right. We're looking at the zebra side. Yeah, zebra red, full. Zebra yellow, full. Zebra green, dead. Zebra brown, one hull. Zebra blue, two hull, good. Pink is dead. And red. Uh... Oh wait, no, that, that's the starting on the next roll. Okay, and, and then um, and then on the other side, pink is dead. Blue has one hole. Excellent. Brown is dead. Full. Full and full. Yeah. Alright, cool. We we have that updated score. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, 80 to 99, Fawn leading in score. And also you can see just uh, the fact that he has three full 
health, Nantex, Aces versus uh, only two on the other side. That initiative, uh, that bid, really making a, a difference in the movement and the possibilities that the players have. Yeah, I think my prediction is going to come true. Nantex are going to win this one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting position for Andrew to be in. He's not got terrible board position. But that bid is starting to pay off more and more for fun. He's able to get those um, bullseyes lined up and getting out of the bullseye arcs as well with the tractors. It's, it's, it really is paying dividends. Uh, and we, you know, cast your mind all the way back to 1.0 when you had the triple jumps and things like that where people would run the exact same list but then would knock off just that one point here and you know automatically that one point bid would be what won you the game. Um, I don't want to see that happen again in terms of Nantex versus Nantex. Um, we know what that path leads us down, but far maybe proving that might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. I, I think other solutions will come out of the wash. I, I really do. I think we'll, we'll find other ways around it. I mean, as we've seen Dash come up and has done well. Uh, I know, I'm not sure. Do we know what actor was running? Because I know he beat an Nantex list. Um, I'm not sure. We could we uh, could find that out pretty quickly. Hector was running a separatist swarm, no Nantex. It was like a Grievous with some bombardment drones, some dr uh, Trade Federation drones. Yeah. Uh, Nick, could you do me a favor, buddy? Could you do me a quick count on how many uh, Nantex lists, like uh, six Nantex lists, we had in the in the event? Yeah, I mean, if if it's something that I use with the admin tools, I don't really know how to do that, but I'll 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 try it. I'll find a way. Uh, you can uh, if you just yeah look at look at the lists, and what you're looking for is uh, I think it's just basically just going through use your your uh, your search function for Petraki Ace and see how many lists you can get. Or Petrarchy Arena Ace. So I've seen a lot of different numbers thrown around in chat. I don't know what that number is exactly. Like I've seen numbers all the way. See, see, look. Literally, I say it, and I got, I got, I got, I got four <laughs> different numbers right there. I got thirteen. I got twelve. I got six. I got seven. All right, we'll find out what the number actually is. <laughs> All we know is there's a lot. Yeah. But interesting comment in, in the, the chat, though, saying, you know, who would win out of four um, Phantoms versus the six Nantex? Because that's a game I'd be interested to see. Four Phantoms. I think it'd be the four Phantoms. Could well be. Could well be. I, mean, I think the... I mean, again, you're flying them all I-4, so they're going to have that same... Um, that same initiative but yeah I, I i think the four phantoms could be an answer but there are things then that prey on four phantoms so it's a case of what's the best all-round counter that you're gonna find all right i got i got a link here somebody somebody linked me a thing uh 13 13 13 actual 13. like six nantex ones i know there's some other variations out uh, there so they're Counting the list that I scrolled through, they all were just Petraki aces, although I guess there is a couple with Grievous, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. how many were the six of. I'll look at that too, but in terms of Nantex lists or with multiple Nantex, there's 13 lists. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and you know, a couple of the eight of the responses that we saw in the meta, we saw Bartosh bring that Dash, uh, Dash Chopper, which was a really, really cool list. He beat a couple of Nantex with that. Um, we saw uh, Netter, uh, sorry, Sammy, Sammy's list, really, really cool. It was a double phantom. Uh, was it double phantom? What was the other, other things in there? I'm forgetting. Wasn't that um, fifth brother, fifth seventh brother sister, seventh sister? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I doubted myself. <laughs> I so, thought yeah. Imperial is still really strong in the moment as well. Agreed. All right. So we got movement back. Zebra Squadron on the move. 
Andrew now is going to be forced to use the tractor shenanigans in order to get positioning for shots. Now, one of the interesting things is can Andrew take advantage of this turn and maybe take up some space that's going to force Long Along uh, into either not having shots or taking poor shots? We'll find out here in a minute. So of, of those 13 lists, four of them were six times Nantex. Okay, there you go. So 13 different ones that had multiple six that had sorry did you just say four i'm sorry i just, I just lost yeah, the number four that had four that had six <laughs> times and then there was a couple with grievous some with dbs 404 and then i saw one with Sunfac actually in there as well oh cool all right so there's definitely some variation out there indeed indeed but i think all four of the um six nantex just made the cut if i Remember correctly? Mm-hmm. They did. They also were flown by really great players. So that's, um, you know, it, it, oh, important yeah. to note. <laughs> Always is. You, yeah, you can't pass up the player just because the list is good doesn't mean um, you're automatically going to win with it. I'm just rolling there for the restraints. I think he's trying to set up um, places to catch um, Fan's blue and potentially green. But I'm not quite sure what Fan's got that in as of yet, so I'd be interested to see what happens. Well, he's working at see He's currently sat in Bullseye because he's trying to debate if the tractor is worth doing or not, I think, on green for, uh, for Fan. Uh, okay, and here's a little... Uh, a little bit more, uh, f not, not, not clarification, but a little bit more finite information here. So while there were four that had six Nant six of the Petrani Aces, I guess there was a couple more, thank you to X-Wing Green Dragon, uh, that had some other variations of six. So using some different upgrades and different pilots in there within the Nantext um, archetype. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool to see the different variations. And... Uh, the question is, with if people start bidding low, people who are going to fly the Nantex, where's the point? Like, are you willing to give up the crack shots to uh, to get a deeper bid? Because I mean, right? You look at Fawn's you look at Fawn's list, and you're like, well, I guess I just dropped the two predators first, right? That's the first well, thing yeah, you do. What I was saying earlier about if you cast your minds back to when we had the triple jumps, people would drop a mind link here or a. Uh, a missile there or something there to then get that bid deeper and deeper to outbid the mirror match. Uh, so I do wonder if we're going to start to see the same thing here. I think there's got to there's got to be a limit point. I seem to remember a, a Fly Better podcast where there happened to be talking about bidding in vultures at one point for the series one. Um, and I think there's definitely a point where you, if you take so much away, it's just not not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, I think the crack shots would definitely be the last thing that you you get rid of, as, as you say. Um, but yeah, I, I do think you will see a dent to, to take one away, take another away. But it might be a case of just take them all away and find something else that, that fits that bill. I don't know. Do you end up going marksmanship? I just If you're going to really tech against other Nantex, will you drop crack shots and go marksmanship first and try that and go, well, I'm going to punch crits through if I do get that bullseye. It's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, essentially. I don't know. Although, Nantex don't really stress themselves too much, so I don't know if that would be... Yeah. Marksmanship. Uh... Two crits. Marksmanship right. stress. <laughs> All right, so we here are getting the movement on Fawn's side. Going to rotate to the front. MN Merck gifting a sub there. Thank you so much. Getting us to 214. If we get to 220, we're going to be giving away three of the Dathomir pins that are for the top 32 here. All 
All right. Waiting for the engagement. Or did oh, wait, we know we're waiting for a couple more to move. Fans debating the barrel roll. Aha. Uh -huh. On red here. Yeah, I think he's trying to see if he can fit behind um, Andrews Brown. All right, and there's the barrel roll landing the bullseye onto the Zebra Brown. Red does not have crack shot anymore, but does have Predator, so we'll have a reroll available in addition to the focus. And now we are into engagement. Andrew gets to fire first as he is the first player. He's got to decide where he wants to take his shots first. So again, just for anybody who uh, who needs it. All right, so we have a arc pointed this way. We have an arc pointed that way. This arc's pointed to the front. And that one is also pointed towards the front. So shot number one going into Fawn's blue. Has a focus token. Going to go ahead and use it for two hits. Got the two evades. Just trying to get a ship off the board there, I think. Yeah. I mean, Fawn's blue only has one hole left. Range one shot. Oh, that feels bad. Not getting any damage potential. Not even being able to strip the focus so far. It's going to have to use another shot. Does have him just outside of the bullseye. Forced to go into green. Does, does roll two crits. Has the reroll with Predator. Nice. Hit, crit, crit. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Feels that's taking it all. Yeah. There's two potentials for double damage here or a few leak into shenanigans. Let's find out. First crit. is That's a dead Nantex. That was wow, a direct right. hit. Yeah. And direct hit. <laughs> Honestly, Andrew not probably not happy to see that second direct hit come out of there. You want you want those to show up later on another ship. Yeah, for sure. Hey, that one. Yeah. <laughs> that does pull Andrew ahead temporarily, one twelve to ninety nine. Yeah. So now he's gonna use his to go into um Farns Blue here. Try and get mm -hmm. him off the board. Got two. No focus. Zebra no, Squadron no, yeah, Zebra Squadron failing to get that ship off the board but got another one in exchange so I guess uh, a win a win a win in that respect Yeah yeah but if you it killed is... it you would have both Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, correct All right F Fawn's opportunity to respond here starting with the bottom there range 1 in the bullseye this is a four die shot focus and predator only going to be able to reroll one of those blanks. There's only one health left here. So. Spend the focus. Yeah, spend the focus gets the three, guarantees the kill. Uh, this one's not. This one isn't. Uh, I guess th uh, this one isn't stressed. Uh, sorry, not stressed. Uh, attracted, but didn't have a focus anyway. Oof. Could not save himself. Yeah, one health. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, is Brown out of here? Fawn pulling ahead, 112 to 116. So already this game is, you just by the score, is different than the previous game that they played in uh, in Swiss where Fawn had a much bigger lead. Two focuses, gonna spend it. That's a damage push through. And that was on to Zebra Red. F 
four die shot going into zebra red. Oh, is there a focus token out there? No, he went over the gas cloud. Oh, okay. Looking for some natties. This is the one that is dead. Does have crack shot available still if we have that correct fawn reaching for the crack shot. It takes hit crit. Crack shot used. Another ship. Taking some pain there. So we're going to get some things cleared oh, off the board. Failure. That's a weapons failure on red. Oof. Well, with one health left, might be taken off the table right here. One of each spends the focus for two, if that is that one's focus. It sure is. Looking for pain here. And not enough. Whoa. Zebra red off the table. Fawn extending the lead 112 to 150. <laughs> All right, with 53 minutes left here in the round, uh, this has been a very, very bloody match. Lots of uh, lots of chips being taken off the board. They were trading one for one for a while, uh, but right now Fawn is starting to extend the lead. You can see that there are only two of the zebra striped Nantex left on the board versus Fawn, who has three. Mind you, of course, the blue Nantex is only at a single hull. But, on, uh, but uh, again, this has been the story of the whole game. Andrew having always one less full health Nantex versus Fawn. Uh, the advantage with the initiative call for, uh, for Fawn definitely taking into effect with the positioning. And uh, I think that's really what's going to end up helping Fawn to close this game. Andrew, though, is doing a great job continuing to press his advantage where he can. And that's what you got to do in this game. Fight to the bitter end and see if you can maybe pull out a win. Oh, yeah. Never give up. Especially not on the line. Especially not when you've got time on the clock. Just do what you can. Dice are fickle things. They are indeed. Unless you're Stom, which when he's playing us, in which case that they just hate him and love us. I mean, that, that's true and accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I do like Farn's positioning here with Red, though he's right behind uh, Yellow Zebra and um, Blue Zebra, um, and his Yellow here can just come right behind. His Blue can just turn in. It's a it's a poor position for Andrew. To be in, and as much as you know, you can say don't give up, you can always call your way back. I'm not quite sure how I personally would go about doing it. What would you do in this situation? Honestly, I have no clue. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth, but it's I, I, I know how good fan is. I, I know Trent, you just got to try and get those shots, get your positions. You almost got to play the, the Hail Mary shots, um, and try and just. Out guess what he's gonna do, which is really hard. Um, it's just a, a difficult position to be in. Yeah, and then and the match, yeah. the matched initiative is is also one of those things that makes it tough because your while clearing a ship is great and being able to kill it, the fact that it can always fire back at you in its dying breath uh, is tough in the mirror match for the person who. Uh, who loses the initiative battle. Yeah. And we saw, and this is why the, the whole breach might have been important on blues, that it's the only time it kind of happens. It's a rare case where it just might maybe help. <laughs> but, mm. excuse me, sorry. Um, but it's just, I mean, it's telling at the start, we, we, we talked about it and both Phil and I said, well, we think the upgrades are going to help and, and be better and blah, blah, blah. Um, and he said, well, actually, the, the initiative bid in this case is probably going to pay off, and it seems to be doing so. It seems to be what it is. 
So here's a question I have for the chat, for everybody who's watching at home. By the way, thank you for watching. want to remind you that we stream live every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday here on Gold Squadron Podcast. If you want to drop us a follow just so you can follow along, hit that bell notification. We stream, again, our live podcast. We have League Night as well as Gold Squadron Flight Club. Lots of X-Wing content here on the channel. Um, my question to you guys is how low would you go? Are you are you going to take out the crack shots? If if you had to make the decision, if I say, or you have to take an antex in a competitive situation, what are you doing? How low would you go? I I, I don't bid. <laughs> okay, that don't. that's fine. That's fine. I, but I, I, I'm, I find, I might so you're, you're going to two hundred is what you're saying. I'd be at two hundred, but I might I might find different toys. Not okay. relying on the bullseye. All right, let's see Whereas where some I of some. I probably would drop the predators. And just go full crack shot. All right. So taking a look at some of the responses in the chat, we have a uh, predator to marksmanship, two naked Nantex as an answer, one eighty six. Who was that? That's that's Death Rain. <laughs> uh, somebody says just dropping. I would just drop the predators. Yeah, which is what I, I personally would judge what the product is. Keep the crack shots. Okay. Crack shots are more valuable. All right, so you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to make a poll here. Give me a moment to uh, to get it worded correctly. And uh, go ahead and let, let me know once that poll comes up. What would you do? Again, I know that you might say, well, Dion, I wouldn't fly the Nantex. I'm telling you, if you did, if you had to, or I'm just asking you in this hypothetical situation. I won't. I should have to fly against them with Dom. That's my only problem. <laughs> <laughs> Phil has an aversion to separatists. That's a normal one. It's a very long-running joke on our channel. All right, we're getting some movement here. Trying to type as fast as I can. And I'm trying to generalize these, <laughs> these as much as possible to... Um, to try to encompass what we saw here. I think rather than but I do think that the the grievous uh lists and five or, or whatever is, is potentially a a better option than a long one. I think you if you can have more option there because you could just take Grievous without sold this one. Which That's I'm not very sure true. A great option either, but that would be an option. Uh, Dank Master eighty five saying worst final ever. You haven't been around much, have you? <laughs> do you not? Do you not? You must not have been around for the Miranda v Miranda never ending say, final. How about untimed finals? How about untimed finals? You get? Have you been around there? No. When I started playing, Scum wasn't even a thing. <laughs> That's all I've been playing for. The Loop and Chewy finals, yes. Yeah. All right. And, yeah, so uh, I want I want you guys' Nantex choices there on the right side. Uh, type 1 in the chat if you would go full 200 points if you had your choice. 2 if you would drop all the crack shots. 3 if you would drop the crack shots and the Predators. 4 if you would change pilots. Or 5 if you'd switch out some of the upgrades in another way. So that encompasses most of the decisions there. Which one would you do from those five? What do you think is the choice you would take that fits either your play style or you think is the right call. Christopher Benson saying this is as bad as Namanda. Namanda was great. Love Namanda. Yeah, you no. love Namanda. So <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I did forget to write drop predators. Ah, well, it's too late now. <laughs> the poll, the poll is up. All right, here we go. Pew pew time. We've reached the engagement phase. Zebras going into the yellow. All right, got two hits there. 
Yeah, Zebra is Turn a fool. Yep, yeah, he's holding on to that focus. Got the two evades he needed. Next shot's coming in. It's on to Fawn. Ooh, that is hit, 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 triple hits. Going into Zebra Blue. The baby boy Blue taking one damage after spending the focus. It is a crit because of hole breach and it is a disabled power regulator. Ooh, that's that's not great because that means he's unable to do the uh, is it wait, I'm, uh, right it's rotate action correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, so no no rate to. Yep, and that also means no tractor. No uh, no. Turn next turn though. Right, of course. Well, that's if he lives that far. Three hits. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, did I read the wrong? Oh, it's well, disabled well, power regulator. Sorry about that. Well, he dies anyway. Uh, that was the yeah. the ionized one. Sorry about that. Just Misread the card. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now we are at a three v one. Fuel leak. Yep. Just drawing drawing some extra cards here. Fawn trying to finish off that last Nantex. Zebra yellow. The last hero of the Zebra Squadron. Yellow's totally got this. It's fine. All right. Blue removed from the table. And, of course, remember, uh, when it comes to games like this, the players are... Uh, <laughs> are, uh, are They are allowed to play as long as they want. Andrew's fighting to the bitter end. If he wants to concede, he can do so. But he he earned the final. He he fought all the, all these matches to reach this point. Absolutely courageous uh, effort here, getting all the way to the final. Oh yeah. No, at this point, it's just no. We'll go on to the bloody end. Well, while we're talking about getting all the way to final, Dion, you've done an amazing job putting all this together so far. So I want to thank you for having us on. And uh, we really look forward to uh, seeing you for the next one. For us, it'll be a couple of weeks, a couple of mm -hmm. uh, month, October, yep. mid-October. Um, but massively looking forward to Carson and whatever tricks you have up your sleeve for that, because I know it's not going to be just straightforward. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> so thank you for everything you do for the community, as always. <laughs> no problem, man. Love you guys. If you guys... Indeed, uh, indeed. I, yeah. I say this... Man. <laughs> Thank you. I say it pretty often. If you guys were jerks, meaning the X-Men community, if you guys were jerks, I wouldn't do it. And if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. So th those are my two two pieces of criteria. So I'm still having fun, and people are still nice. So we're, we're, we, we are A-OK. -okay. I have to stay being nice? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Nick doesn't Fact. do nice. <laughs> That's the Welsh in him. <laughs> Uh, metal Metal Malta in the chat actually asking a uh, an interesting question here. Might be a newer player, so asking why is conceding or dropping from a tournament so accepted slash almost encouraged? So in, in the competitive scene, um, a lot of times players, if you're if you're just trying to win, right? If you if you're if you go into a tournament saying, um, "Well, I," you might say, "Hey, I love the game, but I am using my time to try to win a tournament." That person might say, well, you know, I, I, I might have other things to do. So say, hey, I can't win anymore. I'm going to go ahead and drop and do other things. That, that's pretty common on the competitive scene of all games, to be completely honest. Um, but if you came to play and that's the only reason why you came, win, lose, or draw, then you play it out. The game is mentally exhausting. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It's, when you get through five rounds, six rounds of, of competitive play and you're making the decision all the time, you're tired. You're really yeah. tired. And sometimes you just get to the point of, do you know what? I know I can't win from here. I'm going to go have a drink, sit down, relax. You can go on and play your next game nice and relaxed because at this point, there's no point in me 
make it harder for you to carry on. Exactly, exactly. Uh, real quick here, thank you. Big thank you to Broad Cloak for gifting those subs. Thank you so much. Here's the focus expenditure. Two. Ah, oh, didn't get both. One, two damage going into yellow. There's half points. Yeah, this could be the kill shot. And two hits. Takes another one. He, yep. Yellow holding on. <laughs> I'm not going down <laughs> without a fight. All three of you got to do damage to me. This is just out of range three. Sorry, just out of range two. It is range three. Two hits. I believe in Nantex. <laughs> And spend a, has a focus. He's, he's like, no, I'm not even going to spend it. I'm taking it. <laughs> Go out on my own terms. Congratulations, Fawn is our Dathomir champion. Good game. Thank you to Andrew. You know, I want I want to go talk to those players real quick. I'm going to take a minute. We're gonna we're gonna jump over to their Discord room. Hopefully, we don't scare them too much. Um, here we go. Hey guys. Thank you too. Thank you so much for playing. You guys are live on stream. Hey. <laughs> uh, Fawn, congratulations on your win. Uh, thanks. And Andrew, man, you you fought tooth and nail that whole game. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, let's. I was go trying ahead. to go not too far behind to the point score race, but yeah. Well, I took a I took a look. You guys had mentioned that you had um, you had played this game previously, right? You had it around four, I think it was when it was, um, and you got more points yep. in this match than you did the last one. What did you do different compared to um, that first game in this one? I tried to play more in the obstacles, and my first analysis after the my first loss was that I needed him to be in a close close um, close um, asteroid field uh, mm -hmm. in this case a uh, cloud and um, I was trying to force him to use the tractor because the previous game we were fighting in a no asteroid zone and he was tracting himself as he pleased uh, right. So I just tried to tie my um, my ships so that it would be more difficult for him to use this ability. And and Fawn, how did you approach this game differently, having had playing it already in the Swiss? Um. Well, I did not do things very much differently. I think in the Swiss, I also made like two kinds of groups of three, one that more approached uh, from the front and one more like a flanking, uh, flanking group. Um, although I think this game, I was a bit more patient compared to the Swiss game. So I didn't uh, commit so much. Uh, I didn't set my forces too fast uh, forward. Um, but I think maybe some of these, for example, this green Antex, he went a bit too far out, I think, this game. That was what was a bit of a problem. But, um, Our... Yeah, I didn't I didn't do so many things different, I, I guess. All right. Well, I just, again, want to say thank you guys so much for playing and uh, for I being a part. Thank you for streaming. No problem, man. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Galactic Championship Series. Of course, both of you have your Coruscant invites and uh, look forward to seeing what you guys bring then, especially with the fact that the upcoming wave will be legal in the last two qualifiers. So we'll get to see see if you guys bring something a little different to uh, to that Coruscant flavor. I would love to bring an, an HMP. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Great. I'm going to finish the stream here. But